and welcome to Stories for Wonderful Children. I'm Dan Wendelin, your host and storyteller. Years ago, I began recording the bedtime stories I told my children every night. Now, I'd like to share those stories with you. I hope you enjoy my stories for wonderful children. Well, when Nella had a long and busy day, she had been to school and she had played with her friends, but all day long she had looked forward to after dinner. At dinner time, she had eaten her food as quickly as she could. She had drunk her milk. She had helped her mommy clean off the table and clean off the plates. And then once everything was clean, the family had all sat back down to the table again. And when Nella had said, Aunt Oprin, are you going to tell us about your second day in the land of the dragons now? And Oprin said, well, I think I certainly could, Winella. I think first I need a, a cup of your mother's wonderful tea. So Winella's mommy had gotten up and she had made tea for herself and for Aunt Auburn, and for Winella's daddy, and she had made hot chocolate. And for Winella. And for Winella, she had made hot chocolate for Winella and for Wally, and she had gotten a little sippy cup of milk for Winella's little sister, Tritana. Oh, I completely forgotten about Tritana. What's name again? Tritana. Tritana. Uh-huh. Manella has a little baby sister named Tritana. She's we just... We haven't talked about her in, like, we haven't, years. We haven't talked about her in a while. You're right. So, Aunt Auburn took a sip of her tea, and she said, Where was I? Oh, yes. I had moved into Priscilla's cave, and the next morning I got up and decided I needed to get right to work, observing what it was the dragons did. So she said, So I took my journal and my binoculars, and I decided that I would go out dragon-watching. I told Priscilla that I would be gone for the day, and she was kind enough to pack me a little sandwich. It was a mushroom, banana, and peanut butter sandwich, which I thought would be really disgusting, but when I tried it, it was actually quite good. Manella made a little face. She said, really? And Aunt Auburn said, yes. You know, I thought the same thing. I thought it would be really gross, but to be polite, I tried a bite, and it was actually quite good. Manella said, hmm. That was the same thing with my rat. Okay. Auburn said, now where was I? Yes. So I took my I took my banana, mushroom, and peanut butter sandwich, and I went out for a walk. As I walked, I got out my binoculars. I saw a number of dragons flying overhead doing various things. I looked at them closely with my binoculars to try to sort out what they were doing. After a few minutes of watching, I figured out that the blue dragons that were flying from place to place were all carrying big bags that seemed to be full of mail. So they must be the mail dragons that carried mail from place to place. She said, and I thought that that might be interesting to watch someday, but I didn't think that really the delivery of mail was probably much different for dragons than it was for people. So I decided to look for something that, you know, only dragons did so that I could have something interesting to write about. She said I looked for a little bit longer and I saw that there were dragons that were all in yellow and they were flying from dragon cave to dragon cave and at each cave they seemed to be breathing a lot of fire. So I decided to watch one of these dragons and I had to run along pretty quickly to get close to one and I saw him land and he landed next to a big pile of trash out in front of the cave and he took a great breath and said <laughs> and he breathed fire and burned all the trash up and I went up to him and I said excuse me and he said yes I'm very busy yes I was just wondering what you're doing I'm a trash dragon I dispose of the trash oh I see you burn it up yes well it was nice meeting you would you mind if I watched you work for a few minutes? No, that would be fine. So he went to the next house and <laughs> he breathed flame and burned up all the trash. Well, the next house that he went to, he, the cave seemed to be deserted. He said, hmm. And I said, is something wrong? And he said, well, there isn't usually any trash in this cave. No one lives here. I'm not sure where this trash came from. I said, well, I guess it doesn't matter. He went, and he breathed flame on the trash, and many of the things in the pile of trash burned. But there, at the very bottom of the pile of trash, there was a metal box. She said, 
It didn't burn when he breathed on it. It glowed red from the heat of his flames. He didn't seem at all curious about what it was. He flew right on to the next house, but I waited, the next cave rather, I waited until the box had cooled off a little bit, and then I carefully picked it up and I opened it. There inside was a beautiful blue gem. It was the most perfect sapphire I had ever seen, and it was of a pale blue color, but you don't usually see sapphires. I picked it up, and the gem felt warm in my hand, perhaps from the dragon fire. I decided that I needed to find out who the gem belonged to, so I put it back in the box, and I took it back to Priscilla's cave. She looked at it, and she said, Oh, you have found the star sapphire. That is one of the jewels that protects, that protects the dragon city of New Camelot from invasion by ogres and trolls. It should not be out of its place. You must take it back immediately. So she told me where the gem belonged, and I ran to the wall. As I approached the wall and began to climb the tower to put the gem back in, as I neared the top of the tower, I looked down, and I could hear harsh voices. And I looked down, and I could see there were ogres and trolls, and they were climbing the outside of the wall. I tried to shout to nearby dragons, but I just had a little human voice, and it wasn't loud enough. So I decided the only thing I could do was return the gem to its proper place. I climbed as fast as I could up to the top of the tower, and I was racing against the trolls and the ogres that were climbing the walls. She said, I found a spot that clearly looked like the spot for the gem. It was shaped just like it, and I took it out of its box and laid this gem in the slot, and then for a moment nothing happened, and then I heard the faintest sound, and the gem began to glow from within with a bright blue light. The glow grew brighter and brighter until I had to shut my eyes and turn away. And then I could hear the trolls and the ogres going, Oh, what's that terrible light? And I, I, with my back to the gym, I opened one eye just a little bit and looked down over the wall. The ogres and trolls were all covering their eyes with their hands to protect them from the light, and they were falling off the wall because they couldn't climb without their hands. And then they knew that the gym was gone, was back in place, and they all ran off. She said, but the problem was... That although I had put the gem back, there was still the mystery of how it had gotten out of its place, and I decided to wait. And so I hid, and after a little while, I heard a faint scrabbling noise, and I saw a little goblin come climbing up over the wall, and he was walking towards the gem with his hand outstretched like he was going to take it out of its place, and I jumped out, and I reached into my purse, and I pulled out a pair of handcuffs, and I snapped them on his wrists before he even had a chance to know what was going on, and then he was captured, and I took him back to Priscilla's cave, and she called the police dragons, and they came, and they took him away, and took him out of the city far, far away, so that he could never come back in again and threaten the safety of New Camelot. She stretched and looked at her watch and said, Oh my goodness, Winella, it's your bedtime. I've gone on far too long with my story. And Winella said, Oh, I'm not tired. I love your dragon story, ladies, Aunt Auburn. Aunt Auburn smiled and said, Well, good night, Winella. And she smiled and drank the last of her tea and then got up and went up to her room. Thanks for listening to Stories for Wonderful Children. I created today's story, but questions and clever commentary were supplied by my children. The intro and outro music is by Brandon Thompson. If you enjoy the show, please tell someone about it, or leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Our email is storiesforwonderfulchildren at gmail.com, and you can also find us on Facebook or Twitter. I'm Dan Wendelin, reminding you to tell someone you love a story. 